Are you looking to streamline your order management or project workflows? In this video, I'll show you how to use Airtable's enhanced interface tools to build custom solutions that make managing workflows for projects and orders easier than ever. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, interdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. Let's get started here. If you do not have an Airtable account, there's a link in the description below. Once you have your account set up, you can go in. I am starting with a table already developed or multiple tables already developed as I just want to show you how to build the interface. Many of you already will probably have your table set up with an Airtable. If you don't, I'm just going to give a really quick high level overview of what's going on here. Most solutions or most bases are probably going to be a little more advanced than this, but this will give us the building blocks to show you how to really take advantage of interfaces. I'm going to use an order management demo. A very similar thing is going to be done with projects. The difference basically here is we have orders and then within orders, you have order items and this is your line items and that needs to be connected to a separate table. So you can see here's the items that are existing within the order. So on a project management system, you would have your projects and then maybe your tasks or projects, milestones and tasks, and it will be linking back to the project. A very similar schema in that sense. And then the fields are just going to be what's different here. And then on the order relates to a customer. I have some example customers built in, and then there's a lot of different ways to structure your base, depending on your business. If you're selling products, if you're selling services and depending on the types of products you're selling, the structure and schema of your base is going to vary a little bit. We've got orders and then within each order, you've got your multiple line items. And then from there, we're just linking our line items to products that we sell. So it's really simple hierarchy there. Let's jump right into building the interface. So if you go up here, there's the interfaces button and I can go in and select the interface that I want to build with. In the last year, Airtable has updated their interfaces or many of them have been improved and enhanced uh, the way that they function. Ultimately, I'll get into using a few of them. I'm just going to run through the list here quickly. First one being the list. So that's just a list of records that exist in whatever table you want to point the list to. And you got gallery. This is where you can display images. Well, for example, maybe what we want to do is add some product images within uh, the products table here and using the gallery come in handy there. The Kanban view, this is very useful for managing projects and tasks calendar. This would be more useful on the project management side. Then we got timeline again, very useful on the project management side of things forms. This is to allow both internal or external users to submit some form of data to your system. And then we've got dashboards. This is excellent for displaying metrics and data and dynamically bringing in and filtering out certain points of data. So you can see how much you sold in a given month or week or year, whatever. And you have lots of different charts and graph functionalities. There's also a pivot tables option within dashboards. Then we have overview. This is one of their newer interfaces. What it basically allows you to do is highlight different pages or resources. Uh, maybe you have some sort of standard operating procedure that you want to link here and it will guide users to the pages that they need to access. And then record review. This is simply a list of all of your records as well. And then when you can click into it, you can display your information. This is one of my favorite ones that I like to use specifically for order management systems or even project management systems for that matter. And I will show you what that looks like shortly. I'm going to show you both the list and the record review in more detail. And I'm just going to start with the list here and then I'll jump over building the rest of the system within the record review. 
but the list, this can be helpful. It's just more so of a preference on how you want to display your information. So if we go into the list view here, I can select the orders and that's a good place to start. And from here, we can see our list of orders. Now it automatically picks the information that's displayed here, but we have full flexibility on what data we want to display. And it brings in the field names as displayed within the base as well, but you can change the field name. And again, that's just a display change. It's not actually changing the physical field name in the database side. If we come into here and you can tell when I click this, it outlines the data that's being contained within the list. Or if I click just above it, we can also see that I have some setting options on the entire list view. So orders is displayed here. I can change that if I want the source. So that means it's pointing to the orders table. Uh, we can filter here. If we want to filter out all orders that have been delivered in this view, we can. I'm not going to do any filtering at this level. I am going to leave the group filter short and search options here. So these are user actions. So then that way your users that come into the orders list, they can come in here and filter out as needed or search as needed. There's this user filters by default, it's set to none, but we do have the option here. We can use tabs, we can create different views. For example, we can create based off of the status. We could rename this one to pending. And when we select it, all pending orders pop up. We could use a ordered tab. When you select it, all just the ordered status orders pop up and then all orders would display all orders. And then you also have this drop down option as well. And in this case, it would filter by the customer. What I'm going to do just really quickly is I'm going to bring in a few additional fields. I will hide the ID and customers because the order ID displays this information. Once I've selected the list view, I can go over to fields and I can just toggle this hide button off. Now we have order date. We can bring in status and we'll bring in the total as well. So I'm just going to scroll that across a little bit, tighten it up. And now we can see all of our orders and we can see the status based off clicking all orders, I can see all my orders. And right now when I click tab, I can still see all my orders. But what I want to do is type in pending and then we'll go in, we'll create a filter, look for the status. And when it is pending, it will be displayed. So now when I hit preview and I come into my orders list and I click pending, then I only see my pending orders. And if I click all orders, I can see all of my orders. And when you click into the list view, you have a lot of different options. You can again, filter, sort, group, all by default. You can color your records accordingly, and you can show different field descriptions, collapse all by default, and then edit records in line. So if we toggle that on, I can edit my order date, the status, and all of those types of details. But I'm going to toggle that off. You can also add and delete records in line. I'm not going to do that here. I will show you how to do that in the record review interface type. But one thing I do want to do is turn on this click into record details. This is where I was explaining that it's basically a, a preference thing. Well, if you want to use the record review for handling all of your orders and order line items, you can do that. But if you have a preference of adding it in here, you can do that as well. If we toggle that on. By default, you have two different page styles. So it's the side sheet. But when you click on a given order, it'll just pop out the side sheet. Or you can set it as full screen. You click on it, it will show it all in full screen. I don't mind the side sheet. For now, I will just leave that on. I can toggle off comments, so you can turn on revision history, and you can show all of your fields accordingly. Within the side sheet, you can view your order details where we can see the order date, status, total, all those things we could see on the main screen, but we can also bring in additional fields as needed. You can really format it any way you want. And if you want to make it editable within clicking into the actual order, you can. So from here, I want to go in, open up the order. You can change the order date. We can set this to editable so we can change the status. 
the total that's just going to be as is we're going to remove the order id because it displays up here and then this will be the list of orders so if i click out of this go into all orders and look at an order that already has some items assigned to it i'll open that up we can see all of the order items one thing i do like to do is click into the order items field so that's in the orders tab that's the order items here that's linking to all of your order items i like to go into view visualization is the list view and then from here we have some flexibility on the fields that we want to display i'll click into this we'll go fields to hide the order item we bring in the quantity the price and maybe the total as well so now if i tighten this up a little bit now we can see all of the items that exist within the given order and again similar to the list view back here you have options to edit records in line you can add additional items if needed and you can click into those items if you want to open them up in a similar side sheet or full sheet as displayed here let's just really quickly some of the functionality that you have within the list view what i like is the the record review if i go back over to the interfaces click the plus icon and go down to record review i can add that in i want to have my source as the orders table and i'm not going to worry about setting any filters or sort or group settings next this is asking me what information i want to bring in to this record review interface depending on what you select it doesn't really matter that much because if after you decide that you want to add or remove a certain field you have that flexibility to do so within the given interface but i'm going to bring in all of these different fields here and just click next we can label this orders and i'm just going to call this v2 because i already have an orders table so i can hit finish now and now i have the orders v2 so if i hit preview this is what it would look like when you log in. And if you click your first orders item here, we can see the orders in the list view, or we have the orders in this view as well. And it allows you to search for a given order and you have the flexibility to filter and sort your orders using these options here. I like the way that this is displayed. You can go through and easily see at a high level your different orders. You can change up the information that's displayed on this panel so if i go over to the right side we can see that the title is order id that's good because it gives me the id number and it gives me the customer name but i also want to add the field two we also have the status here in field one that's fine but in field two i want to bring maybe bring in something like the total so i can see the value of each of these orders when i click into it again this order id as i mentioned you can remove it I'm going to remove it because it's displayed up here and this order ID I can remove as well. You have a flexibility to change the appearance, large and extra large. And then on the customer, one thing I want to be able to do here is link in unlink records. So if I click into preview, I can see there's this little X icon so I can toggle that off and assign it to a new customer if needed. With each of these field types, there is, when you click on it, the option to make it editable or view only. Because this is where we're going to be adding and editing all of our orders, we want most of these fields to be editable. So if we go in and make that edit, and one other thing we can do is click and drag to tighten up some of these smaller fields that make sense to being side by side. As order items, similar to what we did in the list view, we want to show as a list. So we click view list and the size that can be auto once we click in to the actual list option we can change the fields that are available hide the order item id we will bring in the quantity and the item price and total now we can tighten up these fields similar to what we did in the last interface and in this one i'm going to toggle on the edit records in line and I want to be able to add and delete records in the line as well. Now, if I click this preview mode, we'll go into this order and change it to pending. Now we can see all of the items that they're ordering. 
but we have the flexibility. Maybe they want to change this to 120 before actually placing the order. They can, and it will update the value. Maybe they want to remove the Bluetooth speakers and go on, we can delete that item and it will update the totals accordingly. Go in, add an item. We can select a gaming laptop or we're going to change that. They've already purchased a gaming laptop or have that in the order. Maybe we want to go into fitness tracker and they're going to do 25 of those. And you'll see that it will calculate here. And you go in, flip that to ordered and it could go to the next step. Maybe at that step, they will be, want to send an invoice, you have to integrate with your accounting software or invoicing software, or you could also build out an invoicing component within Airtable. It's completely up to you. But within the orders table, if we want to be able to add and create new orders, so we'll click over here and we want to allow adding records through a form and just simply add an order with this plus icon. If we go into settings, click this button, we'll see the settings, the label, just simply add order. That's fine. And we'll edit the form within the form. I don't want to allow the user to actually add the items here. It's easier to do that. Once you've opened up the record, I will remove that, but simply we can have a status. We could probably even hide this one because all orders are going to initially be set as pending until the items get added. So maybe we just want customers and order date and we can close that out. But when I go into preview now, hit this plus icon and go choose my customer and I can pick my order date, hit create, and it adds it in line. And then I can go in and add my order or add my products to my order. And one other thing within this interface and most of the interfaces actually is there is a buttons option. This provides a lot of different flexibility and functionality. If we hit this here icon, we can add different buttons, click this button properties, go to the action. We can see that you can go to an external URL, go to a URL within a specific record. We can go to a different interface page, run an automation and customize the workflow that happens when you're clicking that button. And there's just a lot of different options here. We delete a record, update a record whatever you want, really. That adds a ton of different flexibility depending on what you need to accomplish within your given workflow. And one last thing, just to wrap things up, if we go back or we can add another page to the interface and you can use your list view, your record review, really any view here. If we go into list, hit next, you can change the different sources or the table that we're gonna be looking at here. In this case, we would want to definitely add a customer interface or a customer page where we can edit, update, and add customers. And same with products. You might want to be able to add and update specific products and prices in line. Overall, Airtable interfaces have come a long way since they debuted a few years ago. There's a lot more functionality and flexibility that you get within the interfaces, and they are regularly improving them. And there's rumors of more improvements coming in the near future. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.